Let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Get out some something to write with, a piece of paper. I want to give you something to write down. Hebrews chapter 4. You might find another opening real quickly. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and Isaiah 55, those three. Now in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1, Let us therefore fear, or have reverence, lest a promise being left to us, entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, or the word of God was preached, as well as unto them, talking about the Israelites. But the word preached or taught did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. I want to teach a little while today on this subject profiting from the Word of God. Profiting from the Word of God. The Word did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith. And the title is Profiting from the Word of God. Now, I'm, I have, my heart is filled with compassion for the, the, the native men from other countries and the missionaries from other countries and, and uh, from the ministry, uh, both men and women that are sitting in this audience, as well as all of you who have the ministry of reconciliation. My desire is that you may, that you may come into an area that is new entirely new that you will not settle on your lees or settle down in a place and say I have arrived that I have now fulfilled my ministry I tell you the older I get and I'm not very old but I'll tell you the older I get the more I, I, I have a desire to say like Caleb uh, give me this mountain. I'll tell you, I want to accomplish more things in the days ahead than I even thought about att uh, attaining in the days past. We have not arrived. We have just begun. I said we have not arrived. We have just begun. I'll tell you, there's a great, vast, open uh, area out before us and we're living in the mo one of the most exciting, wonderful days that any generation could ever live in. Never has there been such an openness and a hunger to the for the Word of God than today. Wherever we go in the world, there, there are bands of people gathered. They'll sit by the hour, upon hour, upon hour, simply to hear the Word of God. Now, my desire is that you not just hear it, but that you might profit from it. That you might profit from it. Did you know that you can hear and hear and hear and hear and then it'll just go off of you like water off of a, off of a duck's back? And I, I've seen people sitting in an audience, men who were ministers. I knew they needed what was being taught. People around them getting all excited, you know, thrilled by the word of God. Them sitting there, wonder what when we're going to get out. You know, men of God that could shake nations, and yet they're not they're not turned on. The light is not on the inside of them. They do not grasp the gravity of what is being taught. Oh, it's just some more preachers, teachers teaching the word of God. I've heard that all of my life. Has it ever done anything for you? Has it ever done anything for you? I'll tell you, I agree with Brother Copeland here. I think instead of saying, uh, here comes the mafia, they ought to say, well, here's co here comes one of those faith people. Here comes a Cadillac down the way. Here comes a faith man. We ought to live in the best, wear the best, and, but we ought not to be selfish. 
we ought to be willing to use. God is our gold. God is our silver. God is our pearl of great price. But we ought to enter in not only financially, but we ought to enter in spiritually into the gifts of God and the mighty works of God. Oh, when I think about men and women who are, who are so desirous to reach nations and, and you know the image of missionaries needs to be changed. I'll tell you, they come dragging in, you know, and I'm not making fun of you missionaries. I, I'm for you. That's why we want you here, here, here in the Word of God. You know, just barely make it in a man of faith. Three slick tires and the other one about to go out. You see, I'm, I'll tell you, we ought to change the image. We ought, we ought to make them realize that it is not finances they need. It's God and the Word of God and the mighty move of the Holy Ghost. Gloria was talking about uh, uh, Joseph a while ago. Did you know that by the gifts of the Holy Ghost of Revelation that Joseph was lifted in one day from a slave into the being prime minister of all of Egypt? That was the gifts of God in operation. And I'll tell you, we ought to be, we ought to be ready to enter in. Enter in one move of the Holy Ghost can give you all you ever need. One move of the Holy Ghost. Brother Sam Chalendur is doing a great work in India. Stand up, Brother Sam. I'll talk about you. Now, Brother Sam's right here. He's an apostle of God. But I'll tell you, he stood there in a land of great uh, poverty. Million. Don't sit down. I'm going to talk about you. Folks. Don't sit down. Sit, stand up. Stand up. Don't sit down. Stand, in, sit, stand in there where poverty reigns. 600, 700 million people and such poverty in India. Good days, but a lot of poverty. And, and did you know that that man wanted to build a great work for God? Did you know that he went or, or couldn't even get any property? Did you know the property he saw, he got, was uh, in the middle of town, had a great big tree on it, and the reason nobody else wanted it is because it was cursed. They hanged their idols on there and worshipped it, and demons inhabited that tree. And nobody would cut it down for him when he rented it and finally wanted to buy it. And did you know they said, we can't cut it down because we'll die. The demons will kill us. And he put his hands on the tree. That was all around the building. There's only one place it could fall without hitting the building. And he cast the demons out of that tree. Yeah, he did. That man right there. <laughs> cast them deep. Some people wouldn't even cast them out of people. But he cast the demons out of that tree and told that man, said, I'll sign a legal document. said, you climb up in that tree and start to limb it, and we're going to chop it down. He said, I'll die. I'll die. The demons will kill me. He said, I cast the demons out. They'll not hurt you. And the man climbed up in the tree, cut one little limb off, and did you know the power of God hit that tree? He jumped down out of the tree, and God knocked that tree down and laid it in the only place it could go. Right down in the place it could go. Now, you see the mighty power of God's what you need, not money. God can give you all the money in the world as long as you function in the supernatural. Are you out there? Oh, I tell you, you say, what would you like, a million dollars or the gifts of the Holy Ghost? The gifts of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Somebody said, well, what would what, you like to have? You'd like to have a lot of gold and silver or wisdom? I'd like to have wisdom because the world, by wisdom of God, was founded. God made the whole thing out of wisdom. Thank God. And we need to be changed and profit by the Word of God. That's what I'm talking about. Now, these sessions and what we're talking about can, if you receive them and be moved by them, you can be a layman. You can be a man, a woman, you can be a minister, you can be a missionary. But if you'll get hold of who you are in Christ, this lesson alone that Gloria Copeland taught is enough to revolutionize the whole convention. I do not know whether you realize it or not, but if you could grasp that one message alone, you would never be the same. But I want you to know why that's down in my gizzard. I don't know whether I have a gizzard or not, but if I've got one, it's in it. I am the seed of Abraham. God takes pleasure in my prosperity. There's nothing he'll withhold from me. Not one thing will he withhold. Oh, he says, have you seen my servant John Osteen? 
That one that I made the right height, five foot seven, just like I made Adam. <laughs> That's the right height. The rest of it too short and too long. <laughs> Have you seen my servant? Oh, there's no one prospering like you, and I delight. I delight in his prosperity. Praise God. God wants us. There's a new day, folks. There's a new day. Somebody said, well, there's going to be a depression. Not for me. I don't receive that. There's going to be a famine. Not for me. God has not lost the recipe for manna. Thank God, not for me. But this, you'll never get, you'll never get this way without the Word of God. You say, well, what, what, what's, what is it with you fellas and you, uh, you, your wives and all that? What is it? What makes churches grow like this? And, and uh, what, what is it? It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. It's what you've been making fun of. Well, I don't want any of that stuff. You know these faith people. You have to be careful of them. Yeah, they might run over you in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Birds you with their plane. Yeah, you have to be careful. Don't ever go over to Lakewood. You know, it's a strange thing. Wherever they criticize, it's always hard to get a seat there. <laughs> But now the Bible said it did not profit them not being mixed with faith. The Word of God is not going to do you any good. Now I hope that to see some people that I've been concerned about uh, in the ministry here today, but they're not concerned. I'm not critical now. But just, it's enough to make the angels weep. They're not. The Word of God did not profit them. It was not mixed with faith until... You begin to react to the Word of God and claim it as your own, incorporate it in your talking, thinking, and acting. It'll not do you any good. But I've got some good news for you. The Word of God will work for you just as well as it'll work for Kenneth Copeland. But you're going to have to get stirred up. You're going to have to get the Word of God in your thinking and in your mouth and in your acting. You're going to say, this is mine, and, and do something about it. You know, we have the old denominational idea when we have a hang-up, well, call the preacher. That's what we pay him to do. Pray for us. Well, thank God in this, in this church, I, I, I'll just tell you how it is. It's no problem at all. I mean, the, we have people who even have great needs. They never even call us. One time we had a lady here that had, they had a serious accident. Had some of them taken up there, uh, you know, to the hospital. And, and uh, we said, well, why didn't you call us two or three days back? Why, she said, uh, well, you taught us God hears our prayers. God hears us. Don't you think God will hear us? You taught us that. Well, it's no problem when people act on the Word of God. But now you will not get any profit until you mix faith with what he preached last night until you mix faith with what Gloria taught this morning. Faith. All right, now I want you to turn to another verse of Scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is given by... How much Scripture? All. Tell me out loud. All. All Scripture is given by the breath of God. That's what it means. And is what? Wrong. Tell me out loud. Wrong. It's what? Wrong. How much scripture? Wrong. How much? Wrong. And it's what? Wrong. Do you mean to tell me every word in this Bible is profitable? Yeah. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is what? Wrong. But the Bible says it did not profit them not being mixed with faith. In other words, it's not profitable unless you have faith unless you act it and talk it and live like it's so. I want you to think about that a minute. 
Well, I just don't know why in the world I'm always so sick and everybody else seems to be so healthy. Well, our faith works if we, uh, uh, the Word of God works for us if we have faith. Faith is spoken. Faith is thought. Faith is from the heart. You see, you've got to get it down inside and dare to speak it out and chase the devil off yourself. Chase him off yourself. I said chase him off yourself. Chase him off yourself. Have enough faith in God's promise that you have the power to chase him off yourself. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. The word did not profit them. Isn't it a tragedy to have a Bible and every word is profitable and yet not get any profit out of it? My, it did not profit them. I could put it this way. It did not profit you because you didn't have faith. It did not profit you because you did not act like it was so. I can put it that way. I got so illuminated this morning by, by, by the fact that I already knew it, but my light was turned on a little brighter. That I am the seed of Abraham and I will be treated as good as Isaac was treated. And the Bible says that Abraham left all he had to Isaac. Isaac sowed and reaped a hundredfold in, in his crop. I just, I'm just going to go out and act like Isaac and Jacob and John Osteen. You see, but it won't do me any good if I say, wasn't that a, wasn't that a pretty lady that taught? Didn't she have beautiful diction? Wasn't that a cute little message she had? Wasn't that nice? Wasn't that hair pretty? Wasn't she dressed up nice? No, 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 as Dr. Norval Hayes says, dummy. <laughs> it's the word of God she taught. Thank God we ought to go out and cry out, thank God I'm the seed of Abraham. I am the seed of Christ. I, I'm loved by the Father as much as Jesus was loved. Let's just praise him because it's so. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Praise the, I just believe in obeying God. I'll tell you, there's nothing in the Bible that says you have to finish a sermon. Isn't that right? Let's just praise Him for the Holy Ghost. Oh, my Yeto, see Kadabakare, Lienda, the Dabaha, Dolien, and the Niki of Dabahai. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I get dola mohosa telefatil of a candalia and then a nicky by yes or toli mahandea. India sabdilio over a bahada. Thank you, my Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory be to God.